Tank with another ambient glow radio presentation. It's a little bit late in the day today, September 16th, about 3 o'clock. Today we're going to be talking about doubt. Now, doubt is something that I hadn't really ruminated on for quite some time. And I was inspired to do a little bit of a closer examination by one of H. Thomas Ackerman's dis dissertations about the truth community and Fukushima. And I think, well, first of all, I think it's important to note that Gandhi once said, first they ignore you, and then they ridicule you, and then they fight you, and then you win. And when your community is attacked, as I've seen it be attacked, the truth community is under assault. There is no doubt about that. With all the uh, reiterations of the algorithm, making it more and more difficult to get your videos displayed so people actually are able to find out about that information, number one. Number two, there are a whole lot of psyops going on out there that do sow the seeds of discord and doubt. I think one of the most pressing examples and a very effective psyop that we've seen in motion over the past several months, I think it was maybe even August of last year, we might be looking at it for a whole year, Oh, is the Q psyop, which is quite clearly uh, a MISO, and MISO is just another word for psyop. It's called military information support operation. And the same types of thing go on with Fukushima, with 9/11. Okay, but it's important to know that the truth is getting out, and that's what scares them so much. That's why they have to censor. If you want to expose a dictatorship, you have to force them to act like one. And they are acting like one. And there are also certain words or keywords or phrases that are kryptonite. So if you were to say them, um, basically you're going to go into the memory hole, which basically means um, shadow ban, um, but let's just say the first word of that kryptonite is the opposite of true, and the second word rhymes with bag. It's draped over coffins when they um, and soldiers don't make it home. So opposite of true rhymes with bag, draped over coffins. That's kryptonite. Okay. So there's a few words that are out there that the algorithm picks up and memory holes you. So you think a lot of times because there's this the so, the seeds of discord, uh, disquiet, and doubt are being sown into the truth community with everything from flat ops, uh, flat, flat earth psyops, or, um, well, I mean, it's really endless. I could name so, so many different things. And essentially, it's, as a society, we're moving from, instead of a, a long-term vision about the future and what we should be doing as a people and as a community, uh, it's very difficult for people to make the right decisions if they're inundated with bad information or it's hard to find the truth. And this is why we're at such a difficult impasse in human history and why we're in such uncertain times. We're in uncertain times is simply because the American people and people around the world have been lied to for so long 
their entire paradigm of reality is challenged. So if they lied to you about Fukushima, if they lied to you about, say, 9-11, that's going to get me memory hold. Um, if they lied to you about um, the Lusitania in World War II, if they lied to you about... Um, you know, the, the banking interests or, or the fact that we're in an open system as far as how the monetary policy is being run. I mean, if you stack lie upon lie upon lie upon lie, uh, Catherine Austin Fitz and um, Dr. Skidmore did an analysis of just two departments, that'd be DOD and HUD, you know, and found $21 trillion that are missing. If you look at the stock market, it, it, it's complete fabrication. There's no way mathematically that you can reconcile any of that. We live in a controlled economy. You know, we're told that we're capitalist, but on the other hand, there's institutions that can print money and loan it to certain people or individuals at, at no interest, at no limit, and that debt is exported um, around the world. Uh, we're not told about how other countries are wanting to move away from the dollar, how our financial institutions have been um, basically subverted. We're without rule of law. So, yeah, it's, it's uncertain times. There's going to be doubt in everything. And um, doubt can be destructive. Uh, yeah, I guess to make an analogy here, your, your hand is shaking, and you're holding the brush, and you want to create a line. You cannot... There may be doubt that you would make the right impression. There, but you visualize to the end, and you go with it. You have to be comfortable with your discomfort. There's always going to be a little bit of doubt in your mind that you're going to execute that move correctly because we're human. We're fallible. We make mistakes. But you can't allow doubt to um, control you because that is exactly the objective of people that create PSYOPs. They want people atomized. They want people divided. They want people confused. Because the more people are confused, the easier it is to manipulate them. And discernment is a process. It takes many, many years of studying uh, to try and get a good grasp of what is and what is not. And, unfortunately, the information that's out there on the Internet is childishly bad. I mean, and I think that's done intentionally. I mean, for example, let's you know, go look up a recipe, right? Make mashed potatoes, whatever. And you're going to get a recipe that you're going to have to actually convert into something usable. You're going to have to cut the portions down. You're going to have to do different things with the ingredients because it's not going to create a meal for one or two people or even four. I mean, it's going to give you a tray of food. I don't know why. Maybe so you buy more product or stuff that you don't need, but you have to actually convert it into something usable. Or the cooking times are not well explained, or the process is not well explained, or home buying, for example. The information out there is childishly bad. Look up how to replace a headlight on your uh, car. You know, you're not going to find very good information on that. You're going to have to sift through a bunch of information to try and get good information. And that's Everything, absolutely everything, um, 
you know, Wikipedia, for example, take a look at that. It's so inaccurate. There's official narrative, and then they lock it, you know. So all this bad information, again, is dumbing people down, okay? They think they can pick up their smartphone and they can just Google it and get the right answer. Uh, recently, well, several months ago, my brother-in-law and the uh, whole family went out for Mother's Day, for a Mother's Day brunch. And on the menu was something called a basted egg. Well, nobody really knew what a basted egg was. Okay. Well, I had thought, in my mind, because I have a little experience with cooking and I watched my grandmother do things growing up, and when she would baste an egg, she would basically take the drippings of, say, you know, hot bacon or grease or oil or whatever was in the pan and spoon it over top of the egg in order to cook the egg, sunny side up, basted. Well, my brother-in-law, being the type of guy that just knows absolutely everything, he is just too smart. There is no doubt in his mind that he is absolutely right about everything. So he says that uh, he looks it up on Google, and a basted egg is where they take a turkey baster, and they suck the yolk up out of it, and they spit the yolk back out just to give you a, a uh, yellow yolk. <laughs> not, not likely, not likely. But he Googles it, that's his answer. When it comes out, it's basted as I had expected it to be from the experience that I had in my life. I was able to draw on experience to bring about a conclusion or a possibility instead of relying on a technology. And not long ago, um, I went to clear out a, a house of a family member that had died. And I'm a collector of books. I've always loved books and knowledge. And there was a dictionary there, a very old one, a very, very good one, a very valuable one, even with gilded pages. And I took the book because it was a memento that I wanted. But my uncle, he asked me, he said, why are you going to take a dictionary? Because why don't you just use spell check? It's on every it's on every device. It's on all your phones and everything. I didn't argue with him. I just rolled my eyes because I've seen the internet get scrubbed. I've seen them change the definitions of words virtually in real time. So that's why I want the book, because they'll actually have to take that book and burn it. They'll actually have to come physically get it and burn it to redefine something. For those that really know what language is or what language is supposed to be. Now, we're always reinventing um, and finding new uses for words, so I'm not going to exclude that. I'm just saying that even your spell checks are unreliable. I mean, look, when I use my cell phone, and I, I use, I try and use proper diction when I text. People used to ask me, why, why do you do that? Why do you always do everything the hard way? Well, because I didn't want to lose my ability to craft language and have people read it and be clear about it. So I use punctuation and everything else. And... The, spe the, the spell check there doesn't exist. It'll give you wrong um, spellings. So if I didn't know in my head what the right spelling was and then save it into the dictionary that's on the phone, it wouldn't work. It used to be in the older cell phones that they actually had a working spell check. Apparently that function has been removed. Again, probably to perpetrate ignorance. So, this climate of uncertainty, it definitely creates a lot of doubt in people's minds.
And I was thinking about it the other day because um, although I've never met him personally, there's a, a guy I like to look at, watch every once in a while, named Glenn Woodford. You know, he's a very um, he's a very genuine individual, and I like that very much about him. And he, um, I guess, from being from Tennessee, and we we kind of share similar. Um, geographical background, I guess, and being about the same age, and um, I guess it, while he's a very unique individual, it kind of reminds me of, of some of the friends that I had when I was younger. Um, but somebody that I've never known before, if that makes any sense. I know it's that's kind of difficult to explain. I mean, the friends that I had when I was younger um, were, we were all very wild, which is, I guess that's one way to say it. Um, and there was a whole lot of different things going on. And I might talk about that some other day, but I, I was thinking about Glenn and, and his message, and why would Fukushima not be shouted from every rooftop and, and be discussed every day, and why do people want to uh, pigeonhole that or stop thinking about it. Because it is definitely um, probably the most pressing issue of our time. But from my perspective, the people people have to shut down and turn off. Um, there's only a few people out here that can really handle the truth. I mean, let's start with 9-11, for example. That's really the my red pill moment, because I was in high school when that happened. And ever since then, I knew a aluminum airplane could not bring down the buildings that they were brought down. You know, day one. I was shocked, I was horrified, but it never added up to me. Nothing ever felt right about that initially. And I watched a lot of my friends sign up to go to war. Very close friends. Their parents encouraged them to go to war. Everybody was deathly afraid of this threat. Now, for people to face the fact that the government lies to them, okay, the people that they're supposed to trust the most lie to them and kill their children, take their tax money, and they spend it on private projects. That's a very hard thing for people to wrap their head around. They steal your pension money. It's very hard because it's an institution that you're supposed to trust, that you feel like you're represented in. Um, it's very difficult to believe that all of the mainstream media sources that you've trusted your entire life are also lying to you to push an agenda. It's very difficult for people to reconcile the idea that if those are true, if the, if those two parts of 9-11 are true, that it was an inside job, which it had to have been, and they were pushing an agenda of a hundred years of war for private agendas, if those are true, then you have to think, okay, well, what about the provisions in the Patriot Act? Okay, your Fourth Amendment is gone. 
there's an assault on the Second Amendment. The First Amendment right now we're seeing uh, challenged on these social media platforms. Okay, um, you may as well not even mention the the Tenth Amendment, which is kind of a, a catch-all clause, and that's a very very scary thing. It's a very scary thing to think that the FDA is not protecting you, that vaccines are dangerous, that there's all these perils that people were not aware of. Okay, so they're, they're given two choices, or, well, let's say three choices. The first would be to stick their head in the sand and accept the official narrative. Okay, that's the easiest thing to do. The second thing to do, and the reason why they would do that, is because it would force them to have a reality-bending paradigm shift where everything that they believed has now fundamentally changed, and they also have to accept responsibility for their actions in it. And that is really, really hard for a lot of people to come to terms with. They would rather believe a lie so they do not have to confront the truth because that makes them responsible. That's why we have things like militaries and politicians. So they can put the slaughterhouse down the road that's got sick cattle in it that they're injecting with antibiotics and same thing with these factory farms and the chicken and everything else. But as long as that building is, is down somewhere else and they have immigrant labor in there working for slave wages, as long as you don't see it, it's okay for you to go over to McDonald's and get your chicken McNuggets. Okay? So you have politicians that get the blood all over their hands, out of sight, out of mind. It's not my responsibility. I didn't know. And that allows people to do the things that they want to do without accepting responsibility. So that's the whole... That's really fundamentally what rulership is based on. To do, have somebody else do the dirty work that you yourself would find absolutely morally repugnant. So that's why people won't face the truth, for, for one. Um, they can accept the truth and they realize it. And then they think, okay, whoa, well, my gosh, nobody knew about it. It's the most pressing issue of our time. If we can't realize that there's corruption in the government, we'll never be able to institute the policies that are good for the people, and we'll never be able to rectify situations like having the nuclear power plants decommissioned. If you have a corrupt government, you don't have an enforcement arm, you don't have uh, regulatory bodies that represent the people. So there is no lawful way to decommission the nuclear plants, to end the war, to get the financial system under control, to bring back rule of law. Because the ruling class is not playing by any set of rules. Um, you know, just us, you know, justice for us, not for them, that type of thing. So they consider that the most pressing issue. You can't talk about anything else until you talk about 9-11. Because without that, you can't move on to the next step, next step, next step. And they have been frustrated for years upon years. Think about that. It was 2001 that it happened, and we just recently had the anniversary in 2018. You know, children have been born in war where their parents went to war, and now they are old enough to go to war. That is how long we have been at war. And if you look at the financials of it, you find that um, war always <laughs> bankrupts a nation. It does. Um, if you want to go back to the boom-bust cycles um, in the post-Reconstruction period, where we're actually talking about uh, the Great Depression in previous episodes. Um, it's, it's based on war debts. 
okay, from the Civil War, the post-Reconstruction period, and they have boom-bust cycles that go about every 30 years. And 1929 just happened to be a different type of hit because of what was going on. So a lot of the stuff that's based around the Federal Reserve is partially true, partially disinformation, partially just confusion, partially a lack of historical knowledge, and also probably to push an agenda to get things revalued into gold, or maybe put a stop to uh, the Federal Reserve's ability to prop up any business that they want and destroy competition. So that's, I digress. All right. But the New York Times, okay, nothing on 9 11. On 9 11. You know, somewhere buried deep in the back pages, there's some story about a, um, you know, police officer or something, a first responder that opened a pizza shop and now he's successful. Okay, so they rammed that down our throats to get us to go to war, and now it's not even a, a memory because they don't want to put that same story out there again and put it all over the front pages because now most people either question 9-11, they don't believe the official narrative at all, or, or they question it. And very, very few people actually believe the official narrative. And if they believe the official narrative, it's either because of that reason that I gave earlier, that they can't come to terms with it, or they're complicit in it. They're complicit in the deception, and many people are. Their livelihoods are based on it. And that's repugnant as well. Right, so they won't even bring that up anymore. But that's a good thing. What false flags have probably been prevented now that everybody is watching for them? Everybody is looking for the things that should be there but aren't. They're, they've become skeptical. So... Architects and engineers and everybody that really knew the truth about 9-11 have been so frustrated and in deep depressions. I mean, depression really grabbed a hold of the truth community. People have been killed over finding the answers. Uh, William Bill Cooper, Wild Bill Cooper being one of them, he told the truth about 9-11 early on, shot dead in his driveway. Okay, So people have died for the truth. Doing the right thing is not always the easy thing. Sometimes doing the right thing is the hardest thing that you can do. And definitely not safe. Jenny Moore, I'm going to mention her uh, again right now because that's, let's not forget her. Let's keep that on the tips of our tongues for a good long while. Because it's heroes like that people that die trying to get the truth out, what they did to Assange, whether you want to believe that it was a Mossad or an Israeli op, or whatever you want to believe, because Israel's not mentioned in WikiLeaks. Um, so I, I'm skeptical a little bit about the whole WikiLeaks thing, but he's a publisher, a journalist, okay? Now, it's my personal belief that he's dead. He's been dead for a while. Hit team probably got him, and I don't know how Kim.com and the rest of them on the other side not really my Ballywick. The WikiLeaks stuff is not not really my area of focus. So I don't know exactly what their end game is. With that, by keeping them alive, sometimes that's what you would do with a counterintelligence operation: is to have, basically have a straw man that you can't kill, and you release things through him, um, through a dead guy. So I, I think he was killed um, a, a good while back. Um, there was a video where he came out on a balcony in a, a purple tie. Um, I think he was actually killed previous to that, and that was older footage that was put out. And then his mom said, oh, he's safe. I talked to him. I don't believe that at all. So that's not really important. Again, another aside, we're getting information from somebody that might be dead. Again, an environment of uncertainty and of doubt. But the information was good. It stopped Hillary and it opened up a whole new uh, bunch of venues of investigation. 
And that's why we're seeing new waves of censorship, new prosecutions. Because they had all the journalism, they had all the major media outlets sewn up. You know, with six major corporations controlling all of the media, and I mean all of it, coast to coast, everything from your local television station to most of your radio to your film studios, all of it owned by six. And so with that sewn up, it doesn't have the appearance of everything being censored that can be concealed. But with things like the Internet, it makes it much more difficult. They have to apply a lot more assets to confuse people. And again, any, any time you're engaged in, in warfare, and this is essentially information warfare, you force the enemy to, uh, number one, you want to control the environment of thought. And the second part is you want to f uh, force them to react to you. And the third thing is they have to expend more resources, more time, and more energy to defeat you. And if you are a person that has indefatigable, uh, indefatigable spirit, then you are a very powerful person in the truth movement. Um, you never give up, you never give in, and you keep pressing forward. And they have to, anytime somebody has to put out disinformation or lies, and they're debunked or they're caught on to, that's in, those are individuals that are removed from the game, if you will, or... The, the field. They're pieces that are removed from the field. You know, Jerome Corsi or uh, Pachanek or um, a lot of these other just classic common PSYOP actors out there. Uh, they get taken out. And then they have to think of new things. They have to, and it requires a considerable investment on their part to at least keep up the pretense that we're not censored. Um, and there's a variety of different methods I'll probably go into in a different video about how they're trying to achieve all these different things. And we see the algorithm in YouTube that was just recently changed because I lurk and I use a variety of different accounts on a variety of different platforms to see what type of information will flow into that um, vehicle. So it will be a difference between a smartphone or a smart TV or one type of account looking at one type of information, a brand new account, what's put on the recommended, how do I create these um, neural links inside of YouTube in order to cross-promote um, important channels so they actually get um, recommended or put out there. I mean, you, uh, YouTube uses a weighted algorithm and then there's certain things that are kryptonite, obviously. And they'll apply um, uh, certain values of a greater or lesser degree on things that they want to promote for the algorithm to work. Um, you know, certain views go in, a certain amount of weight is lent towards that end of, that that video, and then you establish the linkages. So if one person is looking at, say, uh, Fukushima, 9-11, um, Cat Eye, Other Truth Movement, or Gema uh, Gematria, or whatever, how do you tie that into a gaming community? Or how do you tie it into... So you want to tr create these links. So believe it or not, just by um, watching YouTube and engaging and uh, interacting, you're actually forcing the algorithm to react to you. Um, you. You have to use a variety of different methods to make that work. But it's immensely frustrating when you see a new iteration of the algorithm come out, and it's even worse than before. People catch on. You, my, you know, I get a feed that's filled full of nothing but you know, CNN and Fox News clips and stuff. It's like, obviously because the ratings are in the dumper for all the mainstream media. People go to YouTube for their news and information, and yet they want to bring that crap 
and promote it on YouTube because nobody wants it over there. So let's cram it on YouTube and stick it in somebody's face and hope we get clicks here. And then there's a massive amount of um, uh, um, bot networks, uh, bot farms, which you can u link a bunch of cell phones together and create these b massive bot networks. There's a guy in town here that that does it um, quite successfully, actually. Although uh, he and I don't get along very well. A local nemesis, if you will. Again, I digress. But it's still all illustrating a point about this uh, uncertain these uncertain times and why people are consumed with doubt. Fukushima, okay, Fukushima I didn't know about, even though it happened back in 2011, okay. Well, back in those days, I was up to no good. I um, mostly was drinking. Um, I didn't stop drinking until recently. And when and let me be clear. Alcohol is a form of chemical warfare. It is being used. That's why it's so available. It's why it is absolutely everywhere. It's an addictive substance and it keeps people stupid. And I know this from personal experience. And in fact, if I couldn't have a drink, I didn't feel like me. I didn't feel like I could even make this presentation right now because I had anxiety about the world. But the drink, it made me feel more like myself. It made me feel like I was emotive and expressive, and that's who I really was because I had been drinking since I was 15 years old, pretty much drunk every single day. So I didn't know who I was. And... So I wouldn't have investigated Fukushima. You know, I started to look around in 2014 after a very deep depression, after a, a friend of mine had killed himself. And if it weren't for the efforts of the activists in the Fukushima community, I would have never known about it. But because Guys like H. Thomas Ackerman are out there, or um, Beautiful Girl by Dana, or Australian Milks, or people that went out there every single day and kept pounding out video, pounding out video, pounding out video, and just completely overwhelming it. They were overwhelming the algorithm because it had to be seen. And they themselves were creating these networks that brought Fukushima to my attention. And when I first saw it, when I first saw the magnitude, the horror of Fukushima, I said hmm, to myself, could it be true? Because I'm deeply skeptical. So I started to examine the people in um, the Fukushima movement. Now, I'd heard th things like Fukushima fraud, you know, Fukushima frauds. Was this a scam? Was this people trying to collect money for equipment or whatever um, to further a personal agenda? And it, it basically boils down to this. Number one, I, I'm skeptical of people and their message. And number two, if it were true, and it is, it was so horrifying that I didn't want to accept that to be the truth in, an, in any sort of immediate way. It's almost like something in my soul said, please, God, please don't let that be true. Of all the fucking things, you know, come on, please. And... So I started to investigate. Because it, it's, if it were true, then it's the most important issue of our time. And it is, tr it is true. So I started to examine the individuals, tried to find the people that were uh, attacking the community. I went in and investigated what their gripe was. There was a guy named Palco and some other things that were behind it. 
um, where a person had felt like they had been um, wronged or slighted in some way. And they very, very well might have been uh, from their perspective. As I see it now, I don't, I don't believe that, that anything was done um, in order to deceive or manipulate or take. Um, but people are going to be touchy about money, and it's just that's just one of the things that's just the way of the world. So I explored that, and I was able to discount it. And then I went through the information, and then I also went through gobs and gobs and gobs of misinformation. And... When I finally decided that it was very real, and there were a lot of indications that, that let me know that it was very real, the fact that um, Obama changed all the safety, uh, what's an ac uh, acceptable safety limit for um, exposure to radiation, um, you know, if they had just released an alert or something to the people on the West Coast when that, that radioactive plume came across. Get inside, you know. Have your air filters or something in your house, something that may be able to catch those hot particles. I mean, they even had a hot particle that they found in a lady's vacuum cleaner in California. And a hot particle is basically something that gets into your system and everything around it is going to, the DNA is going to be destroyed around it and that's going to cause cancer. And these isotopes are extremely dangerous, and they're different. Um, radiation is kind of used as a catch-all word. And I have a little background in, um, from my time in inspe inspections, I used a um, nuclear gauge to help me determine what the um, soil density and water content was in the soil, so I could take tests um, down deep to determine compaction and other engineering type of question. So, you know, we were all put through the nuclear safety classes and exposure and all that different type of stuff. So I knew a little bit about it. But at first, I doubted it. I had to. And then when I came to realize it was true, it was, it was probably, I think, the last day of the Depression that I felt because I've always known that I'm going to die. I have no problem with that. Uh, the thing, you know, everybody loves an uh, apocalypse, but here's the truth. We're going to die. Every one of us is going to die. We are all in the end of days. It's going to be the end of your days. And whether we all die together or we go out one at a time, it's still the apocalypse for you. So I had no problem with me dying. I've always known that's going to happen. And I'm comfortable with that. But what bothered me was all the innocence. It was the... It's like, I really don't care if man fucks up. I don't really care... If I die, I don't really care if we all get wiped out. I'd rather not. But to take out the fucking planet, to take out the the whales, to take out the ocean life, you know, that's that was really hard to wrap my mind around. It was just so incredibly fucked. And then for them not to have a solution, they still don't have a solution. It still carries on to this day. But I wept, because it was too much for me. It's like, fuck, of all the fucking things, man. I could, you know, like... Because we did... I'm not going to say we, because I don't like this collective guilt type of shit. Um, because that's... I'm not going to put that on my soul, right? Um, I'm not going to be demoralized. I will be angry. And I am angry, there is no doubt about that. 
but it really hurt because of all the innocents and all the people that are going to be affected by it and didn't know that that was the cause. And then for people to lie about it. And then for basic protections that could have been done to save even a few people. Uh, one of the admirals out in California was heading straight out um, to Fukushima to try and use uh, American engineering and American knowledge and wherewithal to try and get a handle on the situation. And the, f the fleet was recalled. And the whole thing was swept under the rug. Cover-up after cover-up after cover-up. It's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. People are going to be dying of it. And then they tell people it's the plastic straws that are polluting the ocean. Or it's the, you know, your coffee is burned and that's why you're getting cancer in California. Um, you know, the mutated fruits and vegetables and... The evidence is there. I mean, there's a tritium leak from the earthquake that was up in uh, Virginia not long ago because all the fracking that they'd love to do, which uh, destabilizes the earth and causes earthquakes. What happens when you have create giant pockets in the earth and put, pre and put it under pressure? Of course you're going to get earthquakes. They didn't expect to have earthquakes like that in Virginia. Major earthquake... The power plant that's there, the Dominion Power Plant, um, it's got a tritium leak in it that they don't have fixed. All this stuff, all these plants are leaking. There's about 88 or 80,000 tons of uh, nuclear waste just sitting around waiting to be washed out into the ocean by whatever hurricane comes through in Miami. I mean, they're all over the place. And, you know, one out of two people get cancer, uh, cancer. A um, guy younger than me, a friend of mine, died of cancer. Another, another one, a friend of mine is a very young woman, very highly educated veterinarian. It's just eaten up with cancer. Okay, so one out of two people is getting it already, and, and they don't know why. That was unheard of a little while ago. So, and you would think, all right, well, we're looking at possibly an extinction level event, and um, maybe a span of a couple of generations, probably uh, ecological collapse, um, absolute devastation when people don't have enough to eat. And if they realize that the government lies to them, they can realize that that could be a very serious problem in the future. All right, but they don't want people to panic. Because they want people just to keep going to their jobs or whatever. And so I posit to you, so everybody, uh, let's just assume that everybody knows that Fukushima is real. Everybody knows that it's an issue. Everybody knows that it's a problem. And everybody knows that the governments of the world lied to them. What are they going to do? You know, people ask me often, what, what am I supposed to do? I can't do anything. I'm, I, I know it's... Fukushima is a problem. I know 9-11, they lied to us. You know, I know that the attack on the USS Liberty was a false flag that was done by an enemy government. But what am I supposed to do about that? Then they feel powerless, and they feel uh, hopeless, and then they're atta the community is attacked with all that disinformation. You think you're not getting out a clear message that nobody's hearing you, what do I do? Well, you educate. Because I believe in collective intelligence. And while I... And I left this comment to Glenn, so let me circle back to that, because it had actually come to me through some of the things that he was saying. That... Education really is the only way, and I believe in collective intelligence. 2003, most people believed the official narrative of 9-11. Today, they don't. So from the smallest acorns, the mightiest oaks grow. And by that, we may have prevented false flags. We may have 
prevented World War III. And if they try to do something silly like a draft, everybody in America will be up in arms over it. So the same thing about Fukushima. Yes, the message is getting out. I've seen a lot of reports about uh, Flor Florence, the hurricane. What were some of the issues that virtually everybody was bringing up in their videos? The fact that those nuclear power plants were there and that they were at risk for another Fukushima-style event. So while people might not understand the full magnitude or the full scope of Fukushima, I can assure you that people are aware, or at least peripherally aware of it, which is enough for them to take pause when they hear certain things about these nuclear power plants. And with that information moving forward, people, if they can re if we can get representation ever again in this so-called government, um, will be able to implement policies to protect ourselves. You know, there might even be a cure for cancer out there that's been suppressed. Why? Because the medical industrial complex makes too much money off of poisoning you. And so I've heard some different things, superfood, carnivora, um, little small doses of um, arsenic, basically, which is in this, like, crushed up apricot seeds, can help you um, re defeat or resist cancer and, and things like that. So there might be a lot of solutions out there. There might be solutions as far as infinite energy over unity uh, engines, um, cold fusion, um, SEG, which is a type of um, overbalanced magnet. It's uh, based on Professor, Professor Searle's work. You know, infinite energy technologies are probably out there, and people have died for it. Yeah, I think there's a good documentary out there, so if I can remember it a note on it somewhere. Okay, it's called um, A Machine to Die For, The Quest for Free Energy. And so you'll be able to see some of those free energies in there. And they kill you over it because that's how they main con uh, maintain control is through oil. So there is no doubt that we're going to die. There's very little doubt that we're probably going to hit an extinction level event. What's the doubt? What's the doubt for? I'm absolutely certain. I can't find out. I just I can't reason it. I can't ration it. So it's, what, what am I supposed to, to think? Uh, I doubt that anything's ever going to change. I doubt that people are going to wake up. I doubt that we're going to be saved. Uh, I don't know. I'm not a soothsayer. You know, I can make predictions based on sets of information built out from a model. And I'll share that model, I guess, at a, a later uh, date and time. All the different permutations that are there, and probabilities, my background in risk, risk assessments from... I worked in the uh, industry field, um, the insurance industry. So, don't don't be discouraged. You know, it's because of your spirit, because of the spirit of all the people that are out there trying to get the message out, to get the truth out about things, to help people make good decisions. Despite all of the whirlinger, the, the Saturnalia that is thrust upon people to keep them ignorant and confused, and it is an agenda, a very purposeful one. You know, you're defeating that, but it, it's going to get harder and harder and harder, and the situation is going to adapt and it's going to change, because... 
like Gandhi said, first they ignore you, then they ridicule you, then they fight you, and then you win. So, frankly, I'm feeling... I know it's uncertain times, because you never know what uh, criminals are going to do, and criminals are in control. And... You can only... You, you play the game at the level that you're at. Everybody has a place. Everybody has a time. There are certain people out there that are always petitioning and always questioning and always trying to find out what the truth is and seeking reality. There might be very strange things going on with reality that we're not completely aware of. And our perceptions as humans are so limited that shouldn't sow the seeds of doubt. And when it comes to people... There are a couple of principles that I use that help me root out um, somebody that's got an agenda or that may be attempting to deceive me. And the first thing is reciprocal altruism. It doesn't work very well. It's a philosophy that I tried for a long time because most people are motivated by greed. So I operated on the principle where I would not accept payment for my labor at all. I would just do and give. And what that show was, was able to show me was that if people remember what I had done and they repaid that altruism in kind, then I knew that I was dealing with somebody that was above board and could probably be called a friend. And in my world, loyalty is very important. So once I decide that you're my friend, then you're in. And I'll accept all kinds of stuff that, that you'll do because I realize that humans are fallible. You know, I've had friends do all kinds of different manner of silly things um, just because they're human. But they're still my friends. And I set it aside, and we work through it as if we we're family. And I'll call those people my brothers or my sisters or basically my brothers. I don't have a whole lot of sisters. My uh, fiancé wouldn't appreciate that sort of um, affectation. But there are uh, women out there that I feel just as strongly about as if they're my family. And uh, so a lot of things, uh, personal quirks and things, can be confused. And, and always remember, people are going to be wrong about things. They're going to be confused about things, and it might take them longer on their journey to be able to accept the truth, and some people might not ever accept the truth. Now, one thing about humanity is our adaptability is what has enabled our species to survive, as well as awareness, having an awareness of our environment. People that are not aware of what's going on around them in their environment, in nature, they're wiped out. Any animal is. Okay? And humans have been supplied with a lot of their basic necessities without having to exercise too much discernment, awareness, physical effort. Uh, they you know, they, and they're comfortable, and basically the, the body, the mind, it wants to basically please the limbic system, and our hardware, as far as our bodies, it's all about, uh, the mind is there basically to please the body and make it comfortable. So, it takes a, a special kind of individual that wants to seek awareness when their uh, hardware is satisfied. I mean, their survival, their immediate survival does not appear to be challenged. So that's why people uh, that are aware, you know, 
they always call conspiracy theorists and truth seekers, you know, tinfoil hat wearing crazy people, but in fact, they're hyper sane. People in the truth community might seem crazy, but they're really hyper sane in a insane world. So just remember from the uh, smallest acorn, the mightiest oak will grow. And while we believe that, you know, 9-11's a, 9 a hoax, uh, it was an inside job, everybody quit their job, everybody stopped paying taxes, we need to have a revolution in the streets, we can't go on with this, the government's a sham. What does that accomplish? Okay. They can't do it, they have to keep on moving with their lives. Fukushima, it's the end of the world. It's an ecological disaster of un, unimaginable consequences. Extinction, level, event. Everybody, quit your job. Stop. Stop whatever you're doing right now. Immediately. Go on strike. Riots in the streets. Not going to happen. They have to keep getting on with their lives. They have to keep surviving. Everybody says, oh, people are too stupid. People are too weak. That's not, I disagree. They've been attacked, beaten down. They've got so much to deal with. Family, money, all this Babylonian debt magic, all these rituals used against them. Uh, humanity is under assault. No doubt about that. And find out there. Find out there. Hopefully I'm not missing something. I've been Hank. For today's episode of Ambient Glow Radio. I know it was a little intense. I'll leave a comment because I know I rambled a bit and there's a, probably a lot that needs to be explored. Sometimes there's so much, so much to do and so little time. Be well.